Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com. That's where people go to get really, really good at Photoshop. It's an online educational community. Check it out at KelbyOne.com. Okay, today I've got five moves for you in Photoshop. These aren't like keyboard shortcuts. They are actually kind of little things that you do. First off, I'm going to show you how to create a keyboard shortcut for this little thing that we use all the time, the foreground color picker, right? We click on it and bring it up all the time and stuff. But well, here's what you can do. Go into the edit menu. All the way at the bottom, go to keyboard shortcuts, right? And when it shows up, you're going to switch from shortcuts to the application menu, which is the like default. You're going to say tools. Then once you get there, go all the way near the bottom and right near the bottom, you will find a thing called foreground color picker. Just double click on it and type in the letter N. There you go, just N and click OK. So then once you save that, anytime you press the letter N, boom, there's your color picker. All right, that's number one. Number two, look over here on the layers panel. See that lock? It means that the background layer is locked down. If you ever want it to become a regular layer, all you have to do is just click on the lock and boom, it becomes a regular layer like any other layer. All right, tip number three. So if you've got some type here, all right, so I've got some type but you, it's kind of, it's white over red and it's kind of hard to see. So we're going to add a drop shadow. That's not the trick, by the way, here. We're going to bring up the old drop shadow layer style from the bottom of the layers panel. And you can see we have a drop shadow and this one's kind of a little too, there we go. You can see it here. Now, you can change the angle of your drop shadow, right, by moving it here and typing in a number. And you can change the distance it is away. But here's the move. You don't have to do that. In fact, you don't ever have to touch angle or distance at all because you can take your cursor and literally leave the dialog box, grab the shadow, and just place it wherever you want manually. So there's that move. Again, just leave the dialog, grab it, put the shadow exactly where you want it, and that will adjust the angle and distance for you. All right, move number four. Let me back off just a hair. Right click anywhere outside my photo, and now you can change the background color behind your image. So you can go from a dark gray to medium gray to whatever color looks good for you. And our last and final move for the day is with the toolbar. So the toolbar is by default kind of docked over here. You can number one, click right at the top, drag it off and it floats. But at the very top, if you look, there's a little two arrows. If you click on that, not only does it do that, it becomes the double <laughs> double column, which is that's how it used to be back in the old days when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Uh, that's the way Photoshop's tool palette was. And then you can go back and you can dock it on either side. Click over there, it turns blue, or you can put it over there, or basically wherever you like. All right, that's five quick moves. Hey, if you'd like to learn Photoshop and get really, 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 really good at it, go over to kelby1.com, take the free trial. You can start watching classes. Right now we have over 600 full-length online classes on like every Photoshop topic you could ever want. Not topics, but topics. Any topic you want. We got Lightroom. We got photography. We got lighting. We got it all. I hope you'll check it out. KelbyOne.com. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next time.